Oops. We're good. Thanks to the Storm Springs Parks and Recreation Board. Uh, we have Patty Burns, Zach Diener, and Kevin Did everybody get a chance to review those? Did anybody have any questions for any of the applicants? No questions? Okay. You can do them all in one motion since they're all reappointed. You make a recommendation. <laughs> you make a recommendation for reappointment. Okay, so there's a, your motion. Do you have a second? I second that. Thank you. Excuse me, but tonight, buddy. <laughs> we'll put you to work right away. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor of the aye. Opposed? Opposed is carried. Thank you very much, everybody. Foundation update. Um, Joanna, do you have anything for us? Again, I apologize with music. No, I don't have any updates. We, I we did can't hear with... it. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't hear the music, so you're good. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, I don't have any updates. I did meet, um, get a chance to attend the Parks Foundation meeting last month. And I turned in our request for Jesse May's kitchen. And that was going to, uh, they were going to bring it back to the meeting this month, which is the meetings this Thursday to look at options as how to raise the funding for the kitchen. But I did turn the application. The application did get accepted. Um, and so more to come after the meeting this Thursday, Cindy will let us know. I'm going to follow up with Cindy next week and see what um, the notes are from the meeting. And I'll follow up next month at our meeting um, with what the next steps would be to fundraise for the kitchen. Excellent. You guys are moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the June 29th concert was uh, well, pretty well attended. There are probably about 70 people um, that braved the rain and still showed up. So it was a lot of fun and uh, pretty good turnout. Um, the next concert is scheduled for August 23rd, and that is uh, Northwest Sugar Shakers. <laughs> um, one thing about the last concert was um, they're really not liking being on the grass because it's so unlevel. And so I'm wondering if we can have the concert in the um, pavilion or the no, courts? The, uh, courts. I don't know. <laughs> We're, I don't Is that know. a question right now or just a blanket well, statement? It's, no, it's, we've got to decide because this is, uh, it's a week from this Friday. Um, if there's damage to the courts, if there is, yeah, there's right now we're waiting for the courts to be cleaned and I don't want to have any food or drink on the courts that we have to come back and clean them again, but we are going to be having the courts cleaned tomorrow. Okay. What about um, we have two other parks that have cover? There's one in the middle of the um, Sunset Bridge in the circle. They actually have a bit of seating. But there's no restrooms there, which is a what was the problem was in the past. There's no restrooms there. Um. 
the Drainville Park? I think we would need to get the HOA approval to have an event at the park, even though everybody has access to the park, even if you don't live in Bryn Hill, I think for events that we we have to go through the HOA. Is that right? I mean, that would be an HOA thing. And I would suggest getting at least two porta potties or at least at least one. Um, I don't know how many people have gone to the previous concerts um, to make that decision. Um, did we have to do that when we had it out in the bus service? Get approval from the HOA? I feel like we did. I feel like we did. That last year. Had one out there last year. Yeah. Yeah. I would imagine we could probably go do it once without permission <laughs> or, or do it many times over if we have a conversation beforehand. Yeah, you know, as 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 a resident there and sort of how they chosen to run the ship so far, that would sort of I think if we want to be long term tenants there, mm -hmm. well here perhaps in, permission is better than forgiveness. Well, here in about three weeks, we're taking over that park anyway. Um, so I don't know if that's gonna have anything. So do. then would we require um, permission from them after three weeks? No, because it'll be a city it'll park. Be a city park. September 1st. <laughs> but we might be able to wing something with them. But the reason for going there is because the grass here is too unwell. Well, where they do it is right here behind the gate, and it, it is very unwell. Where they're setting up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it the residents that don't like the grass or the bands? Oh no, the residents don't care. No, it's the band. It's um they need a hard surface is what they need. I thought we used to set up a stage for them. Didn't we used to set up a stage? I've seen pictures where the bands have been on a stage here. I've never, I've never had a I could probably here. pull it up, but I don't want to <laughs> mess with this. Um, I guess the one other place, Sherry, sure, tell us the far corner. Where they they out to the far yes. corner out here, and that's not the yeah. one that is. Could we close the parking lot? Put it there. Yeah, I don't know if it's very comfortable to sit on and watch, but. Well, first I'll check out here on the um, closer to Hillcrest there on that corner and see what that looks like. Um, but I just know back here where Mitch and them were playing was. Not good. For one thing, it's a little bit of a slope. And um, I heard one of the band gals saying something about trying to maneuver this and whatever she was doing. So I'll try that and uh, go from there. Yeah. The next day. options in the oh, yeah. Yeah. Where, where do we get the stage that we use for the grass festival? From Oregon Canadian. Oh, so they rent it. Well, they don't rent it, they donate it. Yeah. Okay. But I think yeah. that would be, do you think we may be asking if we would be willing to donate it also for the concerts in the park? Mm, yeah, I don't know. That, um, or that would be too tricky to try to yeah, maneuver it in there. I would probably. Then we've got to, now we won't do it because then we have to have stairs up into it, which is bringing them from the nights have to bring the staircase. I mean, logistics for just two hours. Well, I'll just, I'll look over there um, when we're done with the meeting and see how uh, level that looks and we'll go from there. Either that or we'll go to the parking lot. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 It was a little bit bigger oh, yeah. in the corner on this end. Yeah. Right. I wonder if you should look at potentially long term fundraising to have a cement slab. That would we'll be nice. Put back there. With Green Hill, um, when they're going to have like a concert kind of area where the bathrooms are with their phase four design. So that yeah. would be a good a good place for a future one. But we're, yeah. we're still, you know, Half a year away from any of that. Yeah. yeah. We just need to make sure that there's a good power there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be a good place then, hopefully, for next year's concert. If they'll let us do them, because they'll still be under HOA, won't they? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're always going to be under HOA. Always. We're that one won't have been the city. No, the, none of them will ever in Bren Hill. They're always going to be HOA parks. But we should be able. Sunset Ridge would be the best bet for. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, are I, I guess I'll say, I don't know, given the time and missing last month, I don't know if we need to do one. Mm -hmm. I think that this board could make a decision tonight, in my opinion, um, kind of what we think is best and move forward. Um, if they need it by, and everything kind of settled by October, mm -hmm. that's pretty tight to get, you know, do something now, get it out, get it back in September, approve everything, and get it to them right be too late. I think for us, I think we're more than just more of making a decision at the panel and then maybe in future parks or any changes we can make to, to the community involved. Unless you guys disagree. The, you could do a real simple thing now because of that whole discussion on the housing project. I think you have a Facebook page with what, 100 or so people. We do. You could do that just very simply say, we're planning on this. Does yeah. anybody want to give us any feedback? You know, that'd be a really simple way to see, um, get some pretty accurate data very quickly. Yeah. Um, do we know, can anybody speak to where are we with the uh, phase four or five parks? I have a Oh, that was louder than the last one. Yeah, I had my microphone back there earlier. Um, they had originally, they had talked to me within the last couple of weeks privately um and seeing you know maybe thinking that i could get things mo rolling you know instead of asking the group and they had presented a new design for green hill uh phase four that kind of incorporated what we were talking about with a little open area and it's like i i think it was a good design and it incorporated what we were talking about and the phase four design seemed fine i don't have anything pulled up right now is that what was on the last agenda um, we did indeed uh well i think they had made an update since then um but pretty much that's what they were going to talk about i think their phase four is is going to be completely fine um, with what the goals um, we have as a city. It's just the phase five and what they wanted to do. They, they changed it from a, um, what did they, what, what they originally have? They, they were gonna put like a, a skate park and then the other idea was I think a pickleball court and then, then they changed the last one to a futsal court. Um, and like they, a small soccer court. Yeah, something something yeah. like that, yeah. But they're gonna um, be turf or hard surface on it. That I did not get any information. I heard it was turf. Sure. Or not. Or it can be played on both. Grass. Yeah. It was real grass. Yeah, I don't think they had a final design on whether it was going to be turf or real grass for the futsal. I think it, I think they were alluding to it was going to be turf. Um, but as far as making a final decision, they wanted me to make a decision. I said, we're going to have to wait for the 
um, the resident comments or wait for the board to make a decision. Okay. But in the meantime, they can go ahead and put forth the application to uh, planning and development for the phase four because it, it seemed like it was a no brainer. Yeah, I don't think we had, I don't think the panel had an issue with phase four. I think it was phase five. Mm -hmm. Concerns of the fire pit, like having a fire pit. Did they already, I think the fire pit I looked is out now. At one time they had a fire pit, and a lot of us thought that's just a dangerous thing to try to have. For the phase four or phase five? Phase five. We didn't want a fire pit. Because I don't think they had, I don't think they had that there. They changed, they made a couple other changes in phase four too, but they were kind of minor and just adding a little bit. We can make a note of that, that nobody wanted a fire pit. That's just risky. And I believe they took that into consideration, I think. Are we at a point where we can provide input on phase four or is that ship sail? Um, I think the input that we put in the last meeting was what they took. And it's to me, it seemed like what we were looking for. Um, and I don't recall them actually giving me a copy to share because the meeting it was all online and they just showed me what was going on, like on the actual meeting. And I, don't, I, don't, I didn't get a copy of what they're uh, actually submitting, but it was, it seemed on par with what we were talking about last time. I think the only thing I heard from some of the people here was if it was possible to put a small uh, water feature in that yeah. kids could swim, if that would be hard to add. Um, no, they didn't do that one. Pardon? They didn't, they didn't add a water feature. Right. So I mean, the question is, they thought to do that. Yeah. That was very, like, talking with a lot of the people on and for real, that was very popular with all the young kids. They want some sort of water or something where the kids could get out of here. And asking about skate park, that kind of was <laughs> really not water. Um, so can that, can that go into the, um, the last part? The phase five? And that's what we were, we were, I think that's yeah. the part yeah. we were trying to give our recommendation yeah. for phase five. You know, maybe you could talk to them. Um, uh, I think what I saw, were you talking to, is it her name, Michaela? Is that who you were talking to? Michaela Deer? Well, there's other people from Pacific. But I ran into her one Thursday, and she said the fake turf is quite a bit more expensive than grass. Yes, it is. So one way to keep the cost more balanced would be maybe put in grass, but could we add a water feature? So that would be kind of a little give and take for the cost. That would keep the cost lower. But then could we put some money towards the water thing for the kids? Why well, I, I personally I prefer to do turf there than grass. In the long run, it'll save on um, maintenance down the road too with um, mowing and that's on the HOA though. It's on the HOA. Oh, okay. For all of it. Okay. I mean, it's the skate park is the what we were going to take care of. Anything else, that's Everything all. Else. That's all going to be HOA. So if they want to put in grass instead and water it, that's that's kind of their priority. But I think, you know, us doing the skate park, we would take care of all that. But they would take care of anything else that's not the skate park. Okay. Is the skate park going in phase four? It's not going in now. Right now, the conversation was is nobody wants the skate park unless mm -hmm. unless it was like something really desired by the community, and we haven't really had that discussion with the community. Personally, I, I just think the population, mm -hmm. the amount of population that we use it as a, compared to our population that would use other things is small. And I don't think it's a good idea. I did go visit a couple skate parks over the last couple weeks. It tends to serve boys nine to about 13. Um, of the, each time I'd go there'd be 10, between 10 and 13 kids, and usually one, maybe two girls running around. Um, there's probably a pretty even mix between BMX people, skateboard people, and people riding little scooters. Mm -hmm. um, I primarily, I went to the one over there in uh, Hillsborough. And um, if we're looking to serve sort of the, the nine to 12 boys section, I think it's great, but I think we're looking to hit something, hit a bigger target. The other thing they have, which is very nice in Green Hill is they have a double sidewalk system through the whole neighborhood. It's, you know, like I checked it out when I came in with all these kids on scooters. They just ride their scooters on the double wide sidewalk because there's hills in the neighborhood and mm -hmm. they'll be content riding. I mean, Zach, do you have any feedback? Because you live here and you have 
Yeah. Yeah. What do you think people would say on the, the turf issue and the water park and that issue? Yeah. The, I talked to uh, a lot of residents there over the last month, um, and it seemed like everybody was for some sort of a water feature. Like there's a lack of kind of that here. There's no pool. There's nothing to kind of get out of the heat. And so we're seeing, and especially how many young people there are under the age of seven in that neighborhood. It seems like since most people can't swim, there's something to run around in and get wet is kind of what people wanted. Um, in regards to turf or grass, it was kind of 50-50. Um, I don't really know. Is this considered turf out here that we've got? Yes. Yeah, I mean, turf would be very expensive. Um, you know, having it's to work like those sports and yeah, and then you get a little rubber stuff everywhere and things like that too. Um, it does require maintenance to take care of it every now and then. But um, as far as having to worry about rain or you know those kind of things flooding, it tends to be pretty pretty simple and you can take care of as far as that goes. So you can do more things on it. Uh, you don't have to worry about the weather per se. Um, I mean, to me, I, I to be honest, I don't I don't know which one would be better. I can give my two cents. I think. If we had an unlimited budget, the turf would probably be a decent fit because then you could do other stuff on it as well. Um, and the only risk with grass is depending on too is how much it's going to get ripped up and chewed up, um, especially in the, in the rainy times. But as you know, here it doesn't matter. So. Well, is that something we should let them decide? Is their HOA paying for it? They're not paying for it. They do pay for it. Yeah. They're maintaining it, and so in that sense, they are paying for it. But yeah, they'll get SDC credits for uh, whatever it is that they build. Right. City reimburses them. The ultimate cost is exactly that. <laughs> They're going to pay for the upgrade. Yeah, you have something. Yeah. Um, football can be played on not just grass, not just turf, but also like a tennis court type tennis court. as well. So I have here a picture. Of, this is from the uh, from the Hidden Creek. Yeah. Went over in Hillsboro, so it all it features futsal as well as three pickleball courts also, and so I, I think the more functionality we can get out of the space, the better off we're going to be. Mm -hmm. Turf typically five to ten years would be a lifespan on turf. Um, that can get really expensive to uh, redo, certainly, but um, but something like this becomes you know easily used, not just. This, but I mean, we could put a basketball hoop up at the end or on the side, and kids can shoot the baskets or whatever. So it becomes kind of this multi-function space. I think something like that would be great because every time I drive by, it seems like the pickleball courts are always full. We, we, we could space. use a couple so of pickleball courts out there. I agree. Sure. So and is that the one street? that's currently outside of Hidden Creek? There, out the side door. Yeah, it's that side building. Yeah, yeah, I'm on that side. side. Yeah, and that's that's a good idea. I think that's very similar to what they had presented to me. And I think it had futsal and the two pickleball courts, if, oh, I, if I recall. It was something like that. It'd be great to get that drawing. I don't know if you can get that sent. I can track that down. I can, I can ask them for it. What's the, what's the deadline they want to have this financed? <laughs> Last week. I know they want it, they want it to be done pretty, pretty quick. Did they say like October 8th or something like that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's coming up really, really soon. Yeah. So would they be upset if we finalized it? I mean, it seems like we could finalize it if they were here in the room with us. Do we, do we need them though? I mean, can we make our own, do we feel comfortable making our own decision moving well, forward? Like, I don't know what they're gonna say. I think this is a great idea Matt had, but I don't know what they're gonna push back on that. You know, are they gonna say, I don't know. I think that we should wait until next when we have a full board to vote on it. Okay. Or are we just doing a recommendation? We're just recommending. Recommending to who? To the council. Okay. Um, that's that's pretty much, um, that's another discussion. I mean, we can have a discussion about something else, but like bylaws and stuff like that and what, what our role is in defining all that is something that we need to come up with. Yeah, that's future. gonna be coming up here for everybody to. Yeah. But yeah, it's like we're not voting on anything particular. We're just making recommendations. Okay. I mean, I would say from Sunset Ridge and then observing over here too, grass is harder to maintain than you think. 
Yes, and yes, it is. It tends to get too soggy in Oregon, and then it's hard to mow, and then you got to pay for the water, and then you got to pay for mowing. I mean, so Matt's idea and Zach's first, both of those are permanent, way less maintenance, cheaper for the HOA. Uh, they'd have to budget eventually for repainting or whatever, whatever but it's still going to be less money. Well, in the HOA, they're they're going to be the ones who are taking care of any of the water and the maintenance. But it's like, for example, Sunset Ridge, we have to take care of the mowing and the water, um, and that actually is not very uh, cheap. Seventeen thousand dollars a year. It's it's quite a bit, yeah. yeah give or take. Um, <laughs> So anything that the HOA does, and that includes if you do water features over there, um, because that water is actually going to be coming straight from, I mean, they're going to be paying for any of the water that's used. Potable water. So that's it's, used to it. Yes, it's, and it, it, yeah, it's basically into the water straight from our, our water main, Oscar. our services. It's, it's just going to go straight. So there's going to be a, a, you know, it's going to be a little bit more expensive than, you know, they would like. So I don't think that they're going to be a good proponent for a water feature because they're going to have to pay for that water. Who's not Zach and that aren't going to like me? I don't think that Bryn Hill Development is going to want to put in a water feature because they're going to have to pay for it. They don't have yeah. to they just well, pay for it until it's done. No, the, so done. the, the water. H the HOA. The HOA is going to have to pay for all that water. Well, okay, not, not, not. Zach and Matt are ultimately going to pay for it. Which basically, it's it's. I think we're splitting the hairs here. It's, it's someone's got to pay for it, and I don't think I don't think the development is going to want to pay for all that in the future. That's all that's Rock it. HOA would have to pay through uh, through our scheme fund. Because you just have one HOA, right? Well, you look at two like uh, the Hagen Creek splash pad or or splash pad as well. It's all recirculated water, so it's had a holding tank, and then that's what they use when they go through your stream, and that's just like a filtration system. Um, so the water, what you have in there, is basically more or less what is what is used, if that makes sense. Um, and so that's why my only suggestion is it doesn't always have to be refilled or yeah. That's not how the burden is. But, so what's that? That's not how the our splash pad is over on the other side. Yeah, but I know like that's how like like Hidden Creek and yeah. stuff is. They have a basically a circulatory yeah. refrigerator. You have the advantage though because you have. Um, 500 homes, right? $5,000 for water is a huge amount of money. That's only 10 bucks each a year to buck them up. Mm -hmm. So it's not a huge undertaking. Right. I mean, I think the idea is if you had a permanent, like Matt and Zach's idea, mm -hmm. turf or the Hidden Creek idea, right? Then you'd save all that money of mowing and watering. And then you also have a water park that's going to be a better deal for all of you. I mean, you can present it to them, see what they say. Well, don't they, I guess what I get confused on, it's not, it's ultimately not paid for by them. The HO, they get reimbursed. Okay, the SDCs, like they, they get reimbursed for building it, but the maintenance, they don't get reimbursed for. They are, they are simply maintaining it until the development is done. And then uh, Zach and Matt, the HOA takes it over. But yeah, then someone still has to pay for it. And that's the residents. And it's it's going to be a cost for the residents, whether it's five ten dollars extra a month. That's still a lot for a water feature. So, but I mean, we can we can no, present I think it. ten bucks a year. A, a year? Oh, a year. I thought you were talking about. Money. No, there's five hundred homes, five thousand bucks a year, which is a lot of money for water. Don't make sense. I'm not totally sure. If I like it's worth having discussions with water people because like not a forum or anything water feature. They're devilishly expensive. They're sneaky expensive. Um, I, and I'd love to sort of hear from the pumps and everything. Yeah, the like it's, on it. they're tremendously. That would be that would be on the HOA, and that would that would kind of whether between the HOA and the people actually live in that residence, that you know whether they want to pay for it or not. Sure, we can we can present that as, as something to Bryn Hill, um, but I I would not recommend it. Um, I would recommend it maybe for a future city park so that we can um, do something with that, but not not as part of an HOA. You would, and why would you not recommend it for the HOA? If the HOA wants to pay for it in themselves, have at it. Okay. Yeah. So that if they agree, 
rest of them to find out. I, I do think it's a fair point if they meet with us and give us the ballpark of what, I don't know, if somebody can do research, what do they cost for a year of maintenance? That's a good question. Yeah. Well, I looked some of them up online. It's like you can do your own residential one in your backyard for like 25 grand. It's all matriculation. Huh? So not too insane or expensive. Uh, question but, you finished, Jim. Yeah. yeah. If this is something that we really wanted, could we enter into a potential contract with them? What if we charged every home 30 cents a month to go towards the water for the water park? In the city or in the... In the city. Okay. Um, so they're going to change it. Not just the employee, you know, the entire city. Oh, the city. Yeah. yeah. Well, we have to, the, there would be a long pass for like another city tax. That would be a, um, I know that's something that we're trying to work with with our landscape and maintenance and possibly another fee. But once again, it's it's a fee. People have already shown displeasure in these extra fees in the city. Um, I mean, the, the the levy, the police levy was a major failure in, in that sense. And that was supposed to help with a lot of these parks. But the, I think the, um, the discussion wasn't had there that with the benefits for other parts of the city. And so we would have to have a huge um, uh, showing from the parks board and the city council to tell people, hey, this is what this money is for. This is why we're voting on, on this particular levy for this, you know, or this uh, fee that would be added on, let's say, to the water bill. Um, and we would have to come up with a really good reason and a really good PR campaign for it. Um, because right now it's like I need a little bit additional money for some of these other things, but I'm not willing to do that at this point until I have like a really dead set PR plan and agenda for stuff like that. But if we wanted to, you know, to do that, let's say the skate park, the city was going to pay for the skate park um, and all the maintenance for the skate park. If we wanted to do something like a water feature instead in lieu of the skate park, maybe that's something that we can discuss. But that is a very large expense uh, for the city uh, to take on. Can we do it? It's 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 possible, um, and I can kind of see maybe adding a you know thirty cent you know charge to people's water bill on top of that. But we need to make sure that everybody is on board and everybody you know like like the communication is out there, and that's what people want. If that makes any sense. How much was the little water feature in the park over there? Uh, the boarding park? Yeah. Uh, that was that was built before. I, I don't have an answer. Uh, I don't you know. either. It's been there since the sub um, developments was built. So my guess, like playgrounds and, and, and building the playgrounds and everything, usually between you know six digits. Yeah. yeah. So I would assume that it was in the six digits. Um that's that's my guess. And I don't know how many of those funds were raised um by nonprofits or anything like that, but I can I can probably take a look and find out next time. But my guess is that that park costs anywhere between one hundred and fifty and two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, and and they actually made changes to what was there, other than the water feature. They, the subdivision put the the developer put the stuff in, and this board didn't decided they wanted better stuff. All there was was a log. And Patty, do you remember a log? Yeah, it was, and, it was just a log and like a composite thing. And so a few years back, they the playground and the the shade so it was mainly just a water feature there wasn't even yeah so the there. city invested in the new stuff and they also bought one of those um sail cover shade things um you know how much you spend on water and stuff on the current water park i don't have it memorized but i can find that out yeah so that gives an idea but that's are we wanting something larger than that yes what do you think that I mean, if we could have a, if we could, I could say yes. I mean, I would say yes. I mean, I don't know if we can afford something or if it would go for something as big as Hayden Creek, you know, but I think it's something at least kids can run around. You see them flushed out over there? I have. Yeah, she was like 30 feet in the air. But, uh, but it's really tiny. It is very small. Yeah. You know, but I think even some, I think there's a magic thing between Beaverton, Splash Pad, which is kind of a middle size compared to Hayden Creek, which is really big. I don't know, ours is a small, but I think. 
Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, something even like that. Yeah. You know, I don't think it needs to be a monster, but enough that kids can run around and get wet and you know enjoy being on the sun. Is my my opinion. And if we can give a proposal, I would propose to propose a If they say no, they say no. But that's my view. That's Okay, so where are we at? We're good with phase four. Phase five. Phase five is still under design. Design. More or less. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like the water park, we want feedback from them on the water park, and we want to discuss the surface of the, the course, whether it's real grass based turf or the public turf. We'd like to get some feedback from them, right? I like the bullet that they said. Um, and what is that? Gentle confession. I do sell these courts for a living. <laughs> I sell athletic surfaces. Um, what we have here is what's called an acrylic. This is an acrylic. They're typically redone four to seven years. We sell a much expen more expensive version. That's every 20 years. So we have a warranty to 20% for two to 20 years for it. So it takes some of that out of city, but it does cost more, but we provide some, some performance that just doesn't have. But um and it's got rubber under it too, right? The stuff that 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 we would provide is certainly I would pull myself out of any kind of compensation. I, I understand that. Um there's some other options out there besides just the the acrylic that's been done here already. And uh, this is pretty low maintenance, whether it's acrylic or some of the, the softer stuff out there. What would you recommend on a cost or something like that to get to the best guess? Uh, this would probably be, I'm talking just the surface, and I'm not talking concrete. It would probably be fifty to sixty thousand dollars. But it's going to give you thirty percent shock absorption, whereas acrylic gives you zero percent shock absorption. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, cracks open up with concrete. We see that. We know that. Um, with acrylics, it shows. With our product, it doesn't show at all because it's all elastic. And polyurethane. So we do high small crack. If a four inch crack opens up, we're, the whole world's going to see that. Right? And so if that's something we can take a look at, certainly I can get a price on just that top surface. We should certainly look what the acrylic guys are charging. But, um, but there's more than just grass, turf, and acrylic. There's some polyurethanes. There's some clip together tile, but most people really hate the clip together tile that's out there, the sport court stuff. Um, so, in your opinion, what's best? Look, the stuff we're selling. <laughs> you know, like, let's be honest. Here. Yeah, no question. But my, my role here today isn't to sell sports flooring. No, of course, but I can certainly that. help help provide information, and, and and you know, I would be happy every bit of transparent as I need to be, as far as how like, financially I'm involved with it. I, I would be happy to share that. If I just don't care. Um, my question is, how do you clean it? Uh, you know those big washers you put on in front of a of a of a pressure washer. Just a, just a walk behind. You probably clean it every couple, three years. Something like that. Probably not too different from what you're doing here with your acrylic. And that, and also it depends on usage. There's some other factors into that. But like if it's being used as a beer garden, we'll probably see some additional cleaning. That we need. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think if we've learned anything, if you look at the big piece of grass in Brin Hill, and the big piece of grass in Sunset Ridge, neither of them give you carbon at all. Because it's just a nightmare. They both tend to get soggy and so clumpy. Yeah. And so then we're paying for a bunch of water, then we're paying for the mowing, and the kids don't use them much. So I think either uh, Matt's idea or the turf, the fake turf would definitely be way more usable. I mean, the Bryn Hill, huge piece of grass here, I don't think I've ever have you ever seen anybody use it. Tonight? No, because they water at like nine in the morning and like three in the afternoon. So it's always wet. It's always green. Yeah, it's always yeah. green. It's always wet. So it's not. No, it's no, not usable. One that Justin's taken over it has the same problem. Doesn't get used because we can't get the right mix. Yeah, that will be something that I'll work on so we can be usable. Yeah, yeah but it's, like, not, it's not easy. No, you go out there trying to play ball. Two it's minutes. Bridge. Bridge. I mean, we had a concert there, and <laughs> it was so wet that we had to lay plastic down for the mare to sit on because it yeah. was 
CP. As we go on with age, as as you go and you take the little quartz out and backfill with sand and other things, like they do get healthier and easier to sort of maintain and use over time. Because Washington County clay is especially easy to grow grass in. But kind of kind of golf course. Every spring into the fall, they're they're pulling chunks out, putting a bunch of sand and, mm -hmm. and other things that just make it easier to use and easier to maintain. So I don't think it'll always be as, as soupy as it is now, but but the we'll lowest time. the lowest maintenance. Would be the smartest idea, I think. I think we yeah, landscaping, and I think if you're gonna do it, do it right, right. I mean, like go after something that's a twenty-year potential, and, you know, that will last, that will hold up, and you can hold other events on and do things with, and and it'll probably might be cheaper in the long run. Uh, I I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, me and my well do it right. Your money's worth. It's not gonna just be used by Brindle people. It's gonna be used by everyone. Mm -hmm. So, yep. in my what do you need from us now? Almost sounds like we need to get Lennar and Pacific back um, next, month. next month and show what their updated designs are. Um, I'm not exactly sure if there's enough room for both a sports court, whatever combo that they're planning on, and a water feature. Um, I'm not sure if that is something that is doable. Um, I, I know that if we suggest a water feature, it's probably going to be, we're going to be the ones that end up paying for it um, in the long run. And so we need to be prepared for that. Um, so maybe we can have an option A if we can get, you know, 30 cents for a home or whatever. Option B, if that's not enough. I really don't want to commit to anything unless we know that we're going to be able to pay for it in the long run. I mean, my suspicion is the water park is cheaper than a giant grass turf field. I would assume so too. So I, I don't think the money is going to be the end all because when you've got 500 homes, five or $10,000 a year, which seems like a lot, is only 10 to 20 bucks. It's one or two dollars a month for each home. It's really not because they have so many houses, right? It's not going to be a huge number. I think maybe you guys should make like a prioritized list of what you think your top choices are. And I mean, you go big with, with your wants and then you settle on the discussion you have, but maybe going into it, you know, have that list of what what you all agree is the best, like one, two, three, or what you want to see. That way there's, you know, kind of an agenda when you do talk with, with Lenar and Pacific. Well, now I also think that the football will probably be used more year round than the slash pad. Mm -hmm. So that's something mm -hmm. to consider. Mm -hmm. Would a covered area be under consideration as well? Like for even more year round, the what? a covered area, like a not like a pavilion, but like a covered area over it. I second that. And there will That'd be great. A covered area in that park, or might they be a phase four park? I don't think there's a covered area in the phase four park. I think the one that where they were they were originally at the skate park wasn't there already a covered area in design, or might be a different park? I think you might be thinking of a different one. Um, these. I don't think there was a covered area in the phase four, but there was going to be the bathrooms and there's going to be like that concert area and there's going to be like a nature kind of area and more of like an open kind of area as well. No covered area where the, like the music can be, nothing for cover there. I think that was just a minor, that was like a, like a, like a bandstand. I think there was a covered area right there, but we're, I'm talking about like a covered area over the play area, kind of like what the schools have. Yeah. I think that would make more sense for year round. Mm -hmm. The same for a again of what? Shelter like a pavilion, like a, like what we have out here. Yeah. I'm talking about like a covered area over the entire court, like a, a yeah. larger. I don't think that's like what's at the school. 
Yeah. Yeah, that would be Well, some of the schools in the district um like closest to us would probably be Patterson. They have a whole area that's covered and actually their whole entire play structure is even under it. So maybe if I don't know if someone wants to take a look, but that's kind of a even if you would do like a pavilion or maybe for future concert in the park, it's a really, you know, great size because um, it covers everything. You'll find out how much it costs. You, you know, if it's too expensive, we pull it up. Yeah. So are we saying, are you Dustin, you're going to be their contact and see if we can give them some ideas and then we meet with them next month and try to finalize it? Um, if you if you all have any ideas, send them my way, email them to me, and I will forward them on. Um, and we can see what they come up with next month. Okay. Yeah. And we'll have them back next month then. Yeah, and we need to make a recommendation to the city council so they can get going. Yeah. We'll have Lynn on here next month then. Right. I can get them there, yeah. So I think for the process for phase four, they had to submit it to uh, our planning department uh, for land use. Um, and I think once that goes through the planning, like we can make our recommendation to them, basically, not necessarily council, but our recommendation for, for that. And that's how that process is gonna work. So not necessarily directly to council, but to the, like the planning commission as they're looking over the land use permit. And of course, they will make their way. I mean, that's kind of a roundabout way. Okay. All right. That's an exhausted survey. I think so. So no survey. No survey. I can I can tell them that one of the things I one of the things I had told them is you know how how Greenlight have their open forum and everything. And I mentioned they, that seemed like a success and a lot of information went out. It's like, why don't you do something similar to that? And that was about the last I had heard from them is that they were going to look into something like that uh, for an open forum like Greenlight did. Okay. Um, but if we want to go the route and say no, um, I can tell them, don't worry about it. And just have them come in with a couple of different ideas next week or next month. I mean, we wanted to do something simple that you could work with them and just put something on Facebook and get feedback. You'd get as much there as you would in a meeting. Right. right. But I don't think we need any huge process because you've already talked to a lot of people, right? Yeah. yeah. Between you and Johanna. And I think we're all pretty much in consensus against that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, the main thing was the state park. So I think that we're past that. Yeah. Okay. Moving on, update on kitchen updates at SMA. I don't have any updates for that. Sounds like Joanna will have some after this month's foundation meeting. Go back to coffee and park. Um, so I just received a message from uh, Maria, the, one of the band people, and she had a picture of back there, and she's like, that really looks unlevel. We need a very flat surface. Um, Dustin, when is that, uh, and she's worried about weather, when is that um, big tent coming down, or can that be kept out there? You want to keep that tent up? Is that what we, you're asking? I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Well, I was wondering when it was going to be taken down, or could it be left for that concert for them to be underneath that? So you're wanting to leave this up for another week, uh -huh. is what you're asking? Um, and would you like a stage or something to put underneath no, it? No, it's, it's flat out there, isn't it? Fairly flat. Yeah, where yeah. well, this is a slope. Um, we might have to have it moved if you want to do it in the back corner over there. Could you, get, it. Could you get like a really big piece of plywood from Canadian to like, I feel like one time years ago, 
or something. I feel like someone, like a band, maybe a band even brought it. I feel like they set up their drums or something on that. That's what I thought too. Yeah, we, we can so. get plywood or something. I'm not, I mean, just for the event itself, I'm not going to put the plywood over there for a few days or anything like that. The tent, I think we can leave out there for a little while. Um, I don't know if it's in the way of any of our, our irrigation system or not. Um, but I can, I can definitely have the guys check to see if it's like not in the way of the irrigation system. Well, let me take a picture of that tonight. Okay. And is that grass underneath that? It's part of the grass. Part of the grass. I mean, it's, it's the slope yeah. out there that they're they're not happy with. Okay. So uh, I'll take a picture of it and send that to her. Okay. And um, um but so we would need electricity. There's not electricity real close to there. I don't have a problem with leaving the, the tent. I could just I just need to let the guys know okay tomorrow because that was one of the things that they were gonna be putting up along with the rest of the tents up here. Okay. I'll just take care of that. If the, I don't know what time we're getting out of here, but it's too dark then I'll take it in the morning. Okay. And we should be fine. All committees then. Um, we need to see someone to be the representative on the remote advisory committee um, for the urban growth boundary, and it's called RAP. Um, is the acronym for it? Remote advisory committee, and this is for the UG. So, is anybody interested? I would be interested to be considered. Is anybody else interested? I have some interest as well, but that could be a, a nasty beehive full of adventure. Um, do we, uh, yeah, but I have I have some interest as well. But I'm, I'm but the humble rookie in the room. I could just be the, if you'd like to go. Did you vote? Did, did you vote in the election? I did. Um, not to get personal, but th there's an application online. And the thing is, we want a broad, broad range of people. And we want people that voted no. We want people that voted yes. We want people that didn't vote, even though they were registered. We also want those people, a couple people that cannot register because they're not U.S. citizens, but have a voice in what goes on. Here and there's several of them up in Bryn Hill. Um, so, were you able to vote last time? Yeah. Well, it would be better if you had time because there's this category of those who do. That's so probably a smaller pool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, go, for it. Go, ahead. go get it. You already turned in an application anyway, right? Yeah, so, this is. This is separate from that. Yeah, there can be more there. There. Okay. All right. So I can be posted to apply. Okay. Um, but we need to choose somebody. There, there is going. No, there is to be a representative from each city board or commission. So there will be a planning commissioner. There will be a member from this board. There will be a member from. The library board and from what am I missing? ABC, economic ABC. Yeah, economic development. Yeah, um, John apply. How about we only choose um, Matt then as our representative from the parks board? Would that be okay? Consensus. I haven't applied, but I, is there a deadline? If if you're appointed from the board, then you don't have to apply because um, each board gets one representative. So if there's consensus, which I kind of need to hear it from everybody, then I can let um, the city manager know that we've got a representative for this board now. Um, either way is fine. I mean... 
the person that we nominate from the park will definitely be on it. The other person who applies might be on it, might not be. Correct. Okay. I'm fine with. So are we <laughs> consensus that Matt will be the Parks and Rec Board representative for the rack? That's what we're looking for. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So there was one opposition. Is that what I heard? Okay. Okay. I vote down to the Okay. Um, so I vote down to the So that is. I'm not afraid of that. Let's six. do that. What? You go. I'll fire in an application. That's okay. You go. I'm totally good with that. Well, I don't want to. No, no. no. It's, 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 my, it's fine. My two cents. You were on the last one, right, Don? You were on the pack, part of the pack, right? Yeah. 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 He was part of the original one. Um, so I think, I mean, not, I'm not, it doesn't matter to me, but I, the goal is to get some new people in there that weren't involved with the original pack. Um, were you on the original? Well, uh, they, to be honest, they didn't do what we said. So <laughs> what what came out of the thing was not uh, what was what was the pack again? Well, that was the the public advisory committee that met for the last three and a half years. Yeah, um, I was no, I wasn't on that actually. Oh, okay. I was. But I, got I, I was confused. Anyway, so I think it moves forward anyway, doesn't it? What I mean. Five to one, it moved forward anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So, do you know how big the how big of a group that they want for the Um, I mean, they have they have it broken out. I don't I don't know how because there'll be some representatives. There'll be somebody from ODOT, from Washington County, from DLCD. So, I mean, it's going to be I don't know twenty to thirty people probably, uh, maybe more. Um. There's going to be, they want two people from outside the city limits. Um, they want, like I said, in the inside, they want. Did anybody apply for that? What? Did anybody apply for that? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot in that category. But there's only two spots, so. At the theater of being dramatic, I officially was wrong. No. No, no, no. Like, it's okay. I've got, I've got, a, things are busy. Okay. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm done. So I'm on the board here, but but, but let's revote. Let's send you. Um, at with Matt's approval, I will withdraw my recommendation then. Thank you. Okay. Um, I don't want to <laughs> It doesn't need to be a formal vote, just a consensus that. I second that. I do. Okay, I will let city manager know. Um, six to one, five to one. Because Joanna is not. Okay, got it. Four staff comments. I'm not sure what our relationship looks like with Compton Ridge Golf Course. It's I, I can tell you, it's a um, it was good, it was good. 
right. until a couple of years ago. And now it's st definitely strained. And I believe that's because of the golf, the golf tournament. The, the, the tournament. Mm -hmm. But we've, we would like to have a good relationship with them. We've always wanted to have a good relationship with them. Um, so it's, you know, if we can, right? I, I think so. Well, um, yeah, one of them gets the garlic festival with the blur, but, um, who I worked with before for the 4th of July event, they're gone. So I don't know what. Yeah. I'm not sure about. either. Um, Bill might know a little bit more about that, but, uh, all I know is it's been strained, but we would like to build it back up to where it was. Um, that's a good partner to have a good neighbor to have um my my thought was that if we could meet with them find their worst key times and work with them we'll provide them some goodwill they can get us you know you got us i have a 97133 or one of the whatever whatever the the, the mechanisms look like but find us your worst key times we'll buy them at a discount or those who are playing will buy them at a discount so they're getting a little help out of there because they're Monday morning, I'm, I'm thinking, is a work that's up at Sunday. And then we can provide a benefit and service to our residents saying, hey, we know pumpkin's expensive, but here's a way because we're neighbors and want to be, be better, be, be closer here in North Pines. Um, but I wouldn't want to go on behalf of, of the Park and Rec without getting your guys' thoughts on the case of certain things. Well, and that's a, uh, you would you need to talk to Bill for sure, the finance Man, our finance director first. All right, and, um, and my thought is, and he might go with you. Themselves. Yeah, and we're not going to. Right, I wouldn't um, take out our budget, but but it would be good to have city rep representation too. Okay, so or at least talk to him before you do that. Talk to okay. Bill. So I I'd be interested too, Matt. I'd go with you because we thought about trying to figure out a way because what they want is more people playing. And more people eating at their restaurant. And I think we could figure out a way to get them some money and maybe they give something back to us. Like you could use the range cheaper if you live. Yeah. In that's North kind of a thought. Just yeah. So let's a little back scratching there. I'll, I'll talk to you and yeah. Because again, we're talking about not the private part, the public part. That, that's right. And yeah. I have a little pull because I'm a golf coach at the high school, but not a lot, but enough to get in the door. But Certainly need need the back. That would be a nice board. benefit, teacher. For yeah, I mean, maybe a tea time or two a week. No, it's, the key is if we can help them make some money, they're going to like it. Right. Sure. Okay. Anyway, that's that's kind of my thought. Good idea. I'm for it. Me too. Maybe it could work. Fill in their least used times. Um, a, a practical idea. I don't know if it's been talked about, Dustin or Patty. The uh, pickleball and the basketball courts go through a lot of wear and tear at the Garden Festival. I don't know what the cost would be to actually tarp it some way so that when it's over, you can just take the tarps up and you wouldn't have to clean it. Because I watched them. It seems to me that cleaning is a nightmare for the guys. And um, I don't know the cost of that. I've seen it done before in similar situations where either in a gym or an outdoor basketball court, they tarp them. Because the other thing is there's a little bit of wear and tear, and I noticed some of the paint coming up on them. I can answer that for you yeah. right now. Um, last year, it took my guys between 100 and 120 man hours yeah. to get the court clean, and they didn't do a great job, and the courts were falling apart. I opted to not clean up the courts because I wanted to see how long it was actually, I'm not clean up the courts, but like repair the courts to see how long, because those courts are brand new. Yeah. And so I wanted to see how it lasted this um, festival as well. Um, this year, my crew is not cleaning up the courts. I did hire a private contractor to be able to do that uh, for a significant savings um, and allow my crew to go on to other things. And one of the conversations I had with MPA about covering the courts with the tarp was that was not a uh, recommendation on their part because it ended up being like a trip hazard because you there's like it's hard uh, hard to keep it taut um, and that was also a recommendation by a, another one of those cleaning contractors but it just it, I think the, the feasibility of that it sounded great and the um, on, on the surface it sounds like a really good idea but in practicality it probably wouldn't have worked out and would have been a liability issue more than anything and so 
for now it's cleaning and I do have an initial um, cost for some of the repairs around the courts um, and I need to get some more um, estimates but right now the initial estimate that I have for some of the repairs is over a thousand dollars yeah and what's the approximate to clean it um, the the winning bid on that one was about eleven hundred dollars okay which is significantly less than what I was paying my guys for you know hundred twenty dollars yeah not too bad, really. Um, okay. Pardon? No, it's not bad. It's a big spike. No, I'm not, I'm more concerned about the long term maintenance because we would spend so much money on the courts. What's the best way to keep them from, you know, having to spend money every year repairing? Lamination. Well, we we have to talk more with our expert down here, but <laughs> Matt. We'll go off the courts after that. <laughs> Okay. I, I'm, I've got a few more quotes that I need to get for it, and it's. I think it's just something that we'll have to keep. I, yeah, I. I'll keep it in the back of my mind. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Now there any additional staff comments? The big news that I have is. The dog park is about 90% complete. At this point, the scouts are done with their portion. And my crew has probably about four hours of work uh, to finish. There's some little tweaks that we need to do here and there. But thanks to uh, the scouts and Georgia Camera for providing like the very bulk of the materials and everything like that. And so right now, I was talking with, is Rowan online? No. Yep. Okay. Um, I was talking with Rowan earlier about let's try to get a uh, ribbon, ribbon cutting ceremony uh, coming pretty soon, maybe the end of this month, early uh, September, even if it is, you know, for, you know, a couple months of use of that dog park. I mean, I think everybody understands that that area is wet and we're just going to play it by ear. And because I think a lot of dogs are going to love it, you know, absolutely wet, but I also need to make sure that it's not getting torn up either. And that people are, you know, uh, one of the other things that I was looking into is we need to come up with a, maybe a, not an organization, but a volunteer program, like a food patrol or something like that, um, to see if people can help pick up dog poop every couple of weeks. They should. That's a funny they word. Should. There's a camera out there. No, I don't, I don't think you have to work the way dog parks, the people... Every now and then there's a mistake, and then the other dog people pick it up. They're, I mean, they're pretty good at it. Too. A lot of dog owners are are, yeah. are, are like that. But well, you're going to have the poop station there, right? With the bag. Yep. Yeah, but there's already poop in there right now. People using the dog park yeah. without even being open and leaving the poop there as it is. So it's it's going to happen where people are going to leave. But it. they're usually a pretty good group to clean up after themselves because they like it. So and I, I think the fence looks great. Uh, the scouts did a really, yeah, really good job. There today and it looks great. Um, but Regardless I, of the comments. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But I, I think we're going to have one of the, the comments that I've heard, there's a lot of support for the dog park. A lot of people want a bigger dog park. And the way I see this is, this is kind of like a trial run. If, if we can take care, if we can't take care of a little dog park, there's no way we can take care of a big dog park. So this is going to be kind of a trial run and see how everything works. Um, and we also have an easy way to close off that wet area in the winter. You know, if, um, you know, it does get pretty bad. My concern would be is is the dog poop and the wetness and people not going out there. Yeah, the dogs are going to love it, but if it's wet out there and people are going to be slow, I don't think people are going to be sloshing out there to go pick up the dog poop. And I think if that ends up being really nasty. Um, I mean, I lived in Alaska during breakup season and like you'd see all the dog poop floating off and everything. And it's like, I, I don't want that to become an issue with clean water services. And so that is going to be, it is going to be an issue and I will, I will keep an eye on that. And I, I, I do think that maybe a volunteer oh, thing yeah. might be a, yeah. <laughs> it's a worry about the poop slipping out through the back fence. Wouldn't it be better to like put some uh, kind of you know thinner fencing material in there so it won't be able to slip through the hole? Like a silk fence, yeah. We can we can do stuff like that, but still poop disintegrates over time. 
Um, and so we got to keep very mindful and it, 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 there are some challenges. Uh, and so that would be a good reason to actually shut down the park for, you know, a good four or five months, maybe six months out of the year if we need to. Uh, I would I, I would like, I'd love to keep the park open year round. Uh, I've seen dog parks, you know, with ponds, you know, and then they're just, they're open the entire year. I mean, that would be great. Well, the nice part of it is, I mean, I jog by there year round and the upper is quite a bit higher than the lower. Mm -hmm. So they can just play side to side up by the fence with their dogs and keep them out of the water almost all year. I think we're going to, we're going to see how, how it works. Yeah, it's, but it's, it it's, pro it's progress. It's the bottom line. Yeah. So, well, well. We have like an old fire hydrant that we can. That would be cute, wouldn't it? That had been discussed before, and I think we haven't. Surround it with some gravel or something, and maybe it'll attract them to a certain area to go to the bathroom. Um. Yeah. I mean, we could. We can do that. Um. Yeah, we could. We could do that. And part of it is just seeing how the use is. Uh, another thing that we have. Um. Kind of in our back pocket is to be able to put a water fountain that also has like the dog water bowl in it. Like we've got everything, we've got irrigation, everything out there, but I'm not ready to pull you know the trigger on on that yet because that's still you know, if, if it's not if no one's using that dog park then I'm not going to install. It doesn't work. It? Yeah, um, so it's it's it really is a trial run for lack of better words. Is there going to be a moving board put up? or a recommendation board pick up after your dog? I do have, I do have a dog park rules. There are going to be four, there's four gates all together. There's, there's going to be a 12 foot wide gate for, you know, like mowing equipment and to maintenance, maintenance door. And then there's going to be a two, six foot gates that kind of has like a, uh, holding area before you get into okay. the actual dog park. Question. Before they mow, will they pick up the dog poop if there is any, or will they mow over it? <laughs> We're, we'll see how that looks out. It's most likely going to get mowed over, like if, like realistically. I mean, my experience with dog parks is the dog people, we, you put it on them, and they're usually pretty good about picking it up. And they usually aren't offended by picking up one extra now and then because you got the the bags and the thing right there. You cross my fingers, not bring yeah. cross my fingers. And well, other people, people are there and see people not doing it. Yeah. They come out. Uh, uh, oh, so yeah, there's a lot of dog owners that are very vocal about that. So okay. it's, those, it's those dog owners that are there when no one's. Definitely think. Did you just have a break? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it would be one of those cameras that would be like a wildlife watch camera. Yeah. We're, we're, we're looking for the herons and stuff like that. There. You can have it here looking for your car. You can see, you can see the wildlife there. And the dog there. Maybe that way you can get a grant for it. We'll see. We'll see. Is there anything else that you have for us? Um, that's it. And I think um, just getting a ribbon cutting ceremony because I would like to get the scout there. Um, and get a Joe Cameron there. And I don't know if this is something that maybe the Chamber of Commerce, because I know Joe, Joe Cameron is a big part of it as well. Um, I'm sure they would do it. Mm -hmm. And so that that's, it should take maybe four hours of work to finish what needs to be done. Um, it's just getting that chunk of time. Do you have any pictures of the group that did it, the scouts and stuff? I've got a few pictures. They're kind of all scattered all over the place. It'd be nice to really post that because I mean they really did a nice job. We'll probably put a little article in the September yeah, newsletter nice about it. Warm fuzzy getting them to do that. So. Yeah, that'd be nice. It'd be nice to be there. Yeah, that that was the idea. So. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, and then our ex-officio, um, Oscar Martinez, do you have anything for us? I don't think so unless you guys have any questions thank you for having me i love parks so supporter of you guys thank you um if nobody has anything else i will adjourn this meeting <laughs> thanks cameron thanks rowan thank you you guys have a good night have a good night y'all that's under three hours i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, we had some. Oh, we are recording still. So. Yeah, let's go.